Welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners. This is part 31, and this episode is called Working with Alum Bronze. As the name suggests, alum bronze is an alloy of aluminium and bronze. I don't know anything about the makeup of alloys, so if you need to know more about the makeup of alum bronze, please Google it. I would like to apologise in this episode, particularly at the start, for the wobbly camera work. This is because my camera is mounted on a shelf, and in the chip tray at the back of the lathe I have a piece of wood which stops Swarf from going down the back of the lathe onto the floor. Unfortunately, yesterday I moved the board and it's now touching the brackets that hold the shelf, and the camera mount is vibrating, and the movement is highly exaggerated by the zoom level. I'll fix this later today when I go into the workshop after editing the video. Back to the job. Here you see me machining this piece of alum bronze, and the chippings come off very differently to the way they do with brass. When you machine alum bronze, you need very sharp tools. I'm about to thread the end of it. I'm using an almost new die as well, because I don't want to use an old blunt one. My comments on alum bronze only apply in the home workshop. In industry, it's entirely different. Before I made this video, I always thought that the disadvantages to using alum bronze were twofold. It's hard to machine using blunt tools, it's very hard to mill using a blunt milling cutter, and very similar to phosphor bronze, during any cutting processes, the part gets very hot indeed. Far too hot to touch with your fingers. Once I'd finished cutting the thread, I parted off the bit that I wanted, and turned it round in the chuck to machine the other side. My large showman's engine has a whistle, and also now it has a siren, so I need to make a special adapter which supports the whistle and allows a steam takeoff which will deliver plenty of volume to the siren. I don't mean audio volume, although the two do go hand in hand, I mean volume of steam. The thread on the cylinder is 3 8 by 40 threads per inch, so the thread that you've just seen me cut is 3 8 by 40. But at this end I need to screw in the steam whistle fitting, which is 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. I've drilled a hole part of the way through the hexagon part using a tapping size drill for a 3 8 by 32 thread. For the tapping size I would use a twist drill which is two imperial sizes less than 3 8 If you listen to the sound that the drill is making and watch the way the chips come off, you can see that this is definitely not brass. And if you're using a twist drill that's blunt, there's no possible way you'll get through it. The general rule for machining alum bronze is sharp tooling, and if you really want to have some fun, try machining it using blunt tools. If you do use a blunt cutting tool, you will probably be able to machine it, it will get very hot, and the surface finish will be horrendous. I can remember many years ago machining a piece of alum bronze and I didn't know what it was. And it was only when I'd parted off the component and picked it up out of the chip tray that I realised it was extremely hot. So here's a good tip, if you're machining alum bronze, try not to touch it for a while until it's cooled, or use a cloth, or maybe a pair of pliers. So now the question is, why am I using alum bronze? Because I think you get the message now that it's fairly horrible stuff to machine. And the answer to that is, because I didn't know it was alum bronze when I first started. I thought it was a piece of leaded bronze, how wrong could I be? But when I realised it was alum bronze, I thought, hang on a minute, this will make a good model engineering for beginners episode, showing the machining and later on the silver soldering of a piece of alum bronze. I'm now machining yet another piece of this alum bronze, and this piece that I've just threaded will form the outlet union on the side of the fitting that I'm making. All I need to do is part it off. I drilled a hole and threaded it, 3 8 by 32 threads per inch, in the side of the hexagon part. And now I'm in the outer part of the workshop and the finished component is on the brazing hearth. I've applied some Easy Flow number 2 flux, which is the flux that I would normally use, and here the water's evaporating from it. All I need to do now is get it to the right temperature until the flux takes on a watery appearance. But it's not really doing that, it's taking on a dirty water appearance, and watch this. As usual for the videos, I applied the silver solar early so you can see it flash around the joint. But what's going on here? It's not doing that, it's just running down the side. I'll put some at the other side. No, nope, it's not sticking to the metal much at all. Well, it is down the side, making a right mess of the job. 
So I'll try again. First of all, I let it cool to black and quenched it and cleaned it up. This time I applied a different flux. This flux is called tenacity. And I think it's called tenacity flux because it's very tenacious. The part is looking fairly horrific, but it will clean up on the belt sander once it's been silver soldered. But for the purposes of the video only, I thought I would show you this method. Another thing that's obvious with this metal is it needs a lot more heat to get it red hot. This part of the video is running in real time. And if this was a brass part, it would be glowing red by now. Now it's starting to get somewhere near the temperature that I require. Have a look at the flux, you will notice that it's a lot more watery than it was, it's not as black and dirty. But probably because of the contamination of the Easy Flow number 2 flux, this silver solar joint, in my opinion, is unserviceable. I kept the heat on for a bit longer. Maybe the silver solar joint would be okay, but once I've fitted it to the engine, it would take quite a while to remove it if it leaked. As you can see in this clip, I got the part very hot indeed. I let it cool to black in its own time, and then I dropped it into the pot of water at the side of the brazing hearth. This thermal shock of dropping the part into the water removes some of the oxidisation. But not all of it. It needs to go in the acid bath. But I'm not going to waste time by putting it in the acid bath. Just for the video, I started to clean it up on a piece of 400 grit wet dry sandpaper, and it didn't clean up very well at all. This is going in the bin. And I'll make another one off camera, which will be quicker, because when I'm filming it takes a lot longer. And there will be one essential difference, I'll make it using a piece of brass. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.